So we are live and we have Fabine today. How are you? I'm good, Nicole. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm very happy um, to have you on and to chat. Uh, we've been we've been talking, you know, in the last in the last couple of weeks. So I'm glad that we can we can do this and go a bit um, deeper into you know a, a lot of different a lot of different things. Um, so thanks so much for taking for taking the time today. Um, no, no, thank you. Thank you for inviting me over. And it's it's really great uh, to have this chat finally. I mean. We've been talking for some time now, and it's it's really great to have this chat. Uh, yeah, amazing. Well, I usually always, you know, start these conversations with um, a bit of a kind of a look back on um, how kind of your journey within the crypto art world started, where it started, and you know how and when. So, to go a little bit into history, maybe. Yeah. So. Uh, I think uh, I uh, it my journey started it's uh, especially in crypto art uh, when I when I had taken a break from my corporate life for a moment and I took a year out exploring the artistic side of myself and that is when I was part of a generative arts uh, group uh, from where there was this whole conversation of this new uh, uh, fancy thing where everybody is uh, you know selling their art. And that was digital art. It was amazing uh, how they're not selling prints. They're not selling the stock images. They're selling it for just like that. Now, that, that was really surprising for me. And uh, so I dig deep. And uh, one of my friends, Dame, uh, he introduced me to the space. And he told me there are these platforms. Uh, there are these amazing people who are helping each other out. And you know the whole community thing and everything. And that's uh, probably in early 2000. 20 uh, around February is when I started and I applied to Maker's Place and uh, I, I got into Maker's Place and that's that's where I, uh, I really started my journey. And how did um, kind of like you know wh when you started like what was your what was your initial thought you know like did you like know about like blockchain before like was it something that you you know were aware of like tokenization minting or was it a completely new you know, world and space? Um, blockchain, I was aware of what uh, is the essential technology is, not like, you know, all the dive deeps into, uh, you know, how to uh, how, how it operates, how the blocks, uh, you know, how, how we mint tokens, how tokens are, how smart contracts work and all those things. That came later. I think I was aware a bit about blockchain when I entered and all the other learning happened ever since then. And what did it, I guess, you know, coming back to kind of like also like your your practice, like you've always, you know, been very much into the intersection of like technology and creativity. So this, I guess, this space kind of fits pretty well with, you know, your your the way that you you've um, you've done your body of work. So how did it uh, integrate with all of uh, your creations, your creative process, etc.? Yes. Yeah, so. Uh... Perhaps at least for the longest time, I, I mean, I've been using code a bit for making all these. Uh, I wouldn't say generative or mostly I would say uh, it goes into more like creative coding. Like, you know, you make uh, some 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 kind of uh, creative expression out of it. But uh, I never thought that this is something which could be solved other than the other mediums which I talked about, print and uh, et cetera, et cetera. Or maybe as a product, of course, you can sell experiences as a product. So I, I never uh, was thinking of a monetary value associated with this creation. And it was uh, suddenly uh, when, when I saw and when I heard about this blockchain technology and you know you can create an NFT, which will be collected by a collector. And uh, it's, it's the whole conversation around ownership. Uh, that was uh, very interesting, especially because my works, uh, so for example, one of my works uh, for pilgrimage was on creating augmented reality experiences. Now, uh, of course, the experience is uh, something which we can you know, go through in a journey, but how do we uh, see if the, this, this could be collected by a person? And uh, yeah, the, it, it really worked out for me. I mean, you, you're not only just creating works and putting up in one technology, but you're also leveraging that technology. And these days I kind of try to hack. I'm not saying I'm a good hacker, 
uh, but uh, try to hack this technology uh, and you know see what i can uh, make with that also yeah that's interesting i think probably you know one of the one of the biggest kind of evolutions and like revolutions maybe is really you know the whole area of like generative art and creative coding that didn't really have a let's say like a place you know right in like the the art world like you would you you, you know you see painting you see photography um you see even you know digital art in in some way or form like in light installations and other forms of like digital art but with creative coding it was something as you yeah. said you know kind of more like from a from maybe from a business perspective right you you would you would potentially you could sell that you know but yeah now and, it's uh, yeah yeah and added to that these days we have the support for interactive nfts uh, for many platforms for that matter art blocks and you know beyond nft and uh, opensea itself is supporting uh, interactive nft this is really great i mean uh, it's 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 easier for uh, people like us to express that way yeah and did you um you know so tell us a little bit about like when when you started you know you said you uh you started on maker's place right i'm going to actually uh share my screen um to see if we can pull up your but uh, tell us a little bit about like you know when you started like you minted your first piece on on super rare like how was that like what was the Maybe. what was the initial like feeling and you know tell us a little bit about that story uh, okay i <laughs> I mean, usually, uh, I don't know. I mean, usually people are supposed to be excited and whatnot and whatnot. I, I never, I, I thought this as an experiment. Honestly, this was an experiment. I was venturing into something. I have no idea what it is. So I, I just uploaded it in Maker's Place, just like how probably we'll put up in any of the other uh, art platforms uh, which goes there before. And um, I never expected anything at all. I mean, how can such a work? i mean even sell is what that that's kind of the thought which was going through my mind and suddenly there was this uh, collector who put up a bid and i'm um, like it sold for i mean it, the, my first bid was for 20 dollars and at least coming from uh, i mean at least from in my country that's 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 a good amount uh, and i'm like okay that's that's really valuable i mean i created this piece uh, long back and that is that was just an exploration into a new 3d domain and suddenly there is this value attached to it and I'm like oh this is great and yeah i accepted the bid had a conversation with uh, the collector and it it just went out uh, really well from there so was uh, this the first piece uh, no i no no this is this is actually a recent piece uh, uh, the nano organic series is actually a recent piece I think the first piece was called Wine. Uh, it was a fractal art, and I think, uh, oh yeah, that's the, that's the one. Yeah, yeah, that's the very first one. Genesis. I should have named it Genesis. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, Manta XR. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay, and I guess um, from like. Um, what what does it t tell us a little bit about like the process of fractal art like what did you do to actually you know like yeah. what is your creative process when you go into using and doing these types of uh, creations so uh, there are a couple of ways uh, and tools which we can use to create these things so um, one is of course through code you can you know have an iterative loop and you know recursive loop sorry and you can you can create these fractal creations and uh, find out if some form fits your aesthetic appeal. But uh, this was created specifically. I found this new tool called Mandelbulb. Uh, and uh, suddenly, it opened up a lot of possibilities where you have these combination of equations which you can put up. And the rest of the part is photography. So uh, photography is one area I've, I've always loved. And I've always uh, wanted to aspire to do a lot. Uh, I haven't been, to, uh, been able to do a lot in it. but. Uh, it's all about how you, you know, pose the light, uh, add the depth of field, uh, you know, create the composition and all of those things. And you can do this live on 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 the tool. Uh, you can pose it in different ways. You can use the combination of equations to create these amazing forms. 
which you feel and you can also change the color palettes and everything how the color is distributed across the form uh and yeah i used to i used to make a bunch of creations like this and it evolved over time and this was one of my uh, uh later pieces which came after a lot of evolution and and i do a little bit of post processes after that in photoshop also so yeah that's that's largely uh, how it happened amazing and actually this which is the uh, schrandinger's box is the yeah. piece that is in um the permanent collection and the janis collection of of the museum of crypto art yeah so yeah let's let's dig into this one and talk a little bit about uh about this piece and what what it means and the creative process behind it so um again at that time generative art uh, in the nft space was uh, Small. beginning and yeah okay uh, but uh, people were putting up images and videos and i wanted live code to be put up uh, which is actually the code itself to be put up and uh, one of my first pieces or perhaps my first piece in generative art uh, as such in the nft space was regalia which was an async and this this was uh, a, a sudden piece after that which was uh, around a lot more uh, thought process around uh, you know i delve into philosophy and a little bit of physics and all those things and uh, this this is largely where uh, i was thinking of how attention uh, influences things matter or what not and how if your attention is focused i mean it's it's been it's been discovered in a lot of uh, areas of physics like quantum physics that there is an influence of the observer's attention on the uh, material uh, realm or maybe beyond that also uh so the, i was i was just trying to uh, bring that into an aesthetic form where you know your attention when it is focused it actually materializes and when it is not it is in a chaotic form so if you click on the link over there uh, you can see the live art uh, in the description the first line of the description yeah so if you move your uh, mouse towards the center which is probably the attention you're focusing it and it, the chaos becomes nullified and if you the further you are not focusing on the action at hand or whatever you're focusing on the chaos increases so huh. it it goes either way not just in physics it goes in how you are performing something if you're doing something you you if you're not focused on it uh that's that's what happens and the background it's it gives an idea of how everything becomes plain and white when it is focused going into transcending and what not so yeah that was a largely the idea of this artwork and i and i was really surprised uh, how one collected this at that time and it was just an experiment uh, generative art code i don't know even if people would know what it is but all one had the thought process to uh, you know appreciate it so th that's actually interesting because you know i like obviously like i guess you know this is super cool actually um i guess you know a lot of people as well maybe didn't even really like now you know generative art is a very common form of art right you know we see it like a lot you know there's art blocks there's hick at noon there's a lot of platforms that as you mentioned you know beyond and if that allow and like support that and um it's you know it, it's it's nothing let's say it's it's almost like nothing new right but at the time like it was still very niche so for somebody to 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 collect that like did you did you and Colburn like have a have a conversation like how did that how did that go like what what happened there i think uh, we didn't have a conversation i think colborn is uh, largely visionary when it comes to some of these kind of artworks which is uh, i wouldn't i am i i don't know i mean i've seen his collection i i know it's he has this eye towards something which uh, might turn out to be something else in the future uh, so i don't say i'm i'm not saying mine would be that but i've seen some of his collection and those are amazing pieces which he has and uh, i'm i'm just happy that this was one uh, piece that got his attention because uh, again at that time uh, this was largely an experiment uh, yeah. and he he found it out <laughs> at that time yeah that's amazing um and you mentioned that you did the first of this on async right yes 
regalia, right? This one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You might want to close that window. It it's it's, it's a very basic code. It might slow down your system or something. Uh, the window which you opened the art. Okay. <laughs> yeah, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, uh, so uh, Regalia, okay, so this was the first live generative artwork because uh, at that time, uh, Async just had started and uh, there was this amazing idea of how, you know, collectors can switch layers and it, it was just mind-blowing innovation at that time. And I was having conversations with Conlon at that time and Conlon was suggesting that we could have, uh, we could, you know, connect uh, the layer changes we could fetch that as an API. We can fetch the data of the layer changes and you can put that into another work altogether. So for example, if you change a layer uh, from date, uh, say from uh, left to right, this could be reflected in the live code website somewhere else. So that was essentially the background of the story and uh, that certainly opened up a lot of possibilities and I went into creating this. So uh, if you go back, Again, can you click on the link there? Uh, this one. The interact, yeah, in, yeah. So now if you draw on the piece uh, in the bl uh, black area, so you can see how it creates a mandala. Uh, so this was created in such a manner that you can, you know, you, you will go zen, zen into it. You can enjoy it as long as you want. You can keep creating. Uh, and each of the time, the color changes a little. Now, the amazing thing is that uh, each of the settings of this artwork like you know the color palette or even the brush size or even um, the symmetry number of symmetry uh, planes all these things can be con controlled by the collector so you saw four layers initially right so if you if you switch those layers each of these settings changes and you know different types of color themes and all the things come up so yeah that was largely the idea of regalia and so, uh, yeah the palette um, so the colors that we see here are basically controlled by the owners of the layers, right? Yes. So this is the and, main palette. There are four yeah. other palettes. Okay, amazing. And then the same happens for the rest of the layers. So the insignia, yeah. so what we see at the center, which is this. Yeah. The symmetry, so basically yeah. the, the, what, I, what I'm drawing, like kind of the, the drawing, and yeah. the palette as well. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, the brush size. Yeah, the brush size, sorry, yeah. yeah. And, I, you know, I, I think, like, when was this, when, when did you, when did you um, mint this again? Oh, Six I months ago, was, said, or No, no, more? no, a year yeah. ago, if you see uh, the created, you can, probably click on yeah uh, yeah there was a bidding war and everything so i don't know <laughs> yeah it's it's a year ago Culver. yeah 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 wow okay yeah. it was a year ago so so this yeah. this so you created specifically uh this was like an ad hoc code that you did specifically with for async yeah. to actually be able to change all of these uh layers yes. right yes and uh, so although I, I mean, I, I'm used to use putting up code in GitHub, I wasn't familiar with IPFS and Async actually put, helped me put up this code in uh, IPFS also so that, you know, there is a decentralized version of it available also. So yeah, uh, that's, that's so and it was an interesting journey because at that time the community participated in creating these regalias. We ran, ran a small contest and everything, and everybody was posting their creations. And uh, it, it was a really uh, fun time at that time. And I, again, uh, the principle behind this is that I was creating for creating. So I kind yeah. of was making some tools, I was working in companies where we create tools for creators. So adding all those together, uh, it came down to this. This is so cool. I didn't know about this. It's so amazing. You know, you just you should probably you, check out Chromology also. Then you should uh, let me. Wh where is it? Let me go into it. Go back. Uh, uh, okay, Chromology, it yeah. Um, again, uh, the link is there. Yep. I should probably ask Conlent. You can click on it. I think it's clickable. You don't have to go. You don't have to copy paste it. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Okay, just just draw on the canvas, just like that. 
just just if you feel it can maximize it uh yeah yeah that's it it's 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 kind of a play of colors you can and you can paint with colors save it and you can save it yeah but as i said it's a bit heavy so you can probably close uh, regalia also oh wow okay <laughs> and all of these um cuz you said something interesting just now which is you know at the time i was like creating for you know experimenting um is this yeah. has that changed now like is it more is is it less kind of experimentation and more yeah to, like why why this uh, why did you why did you say that yeah so um so the thing is it was a mix of experimentation so when when you are experimenting you're trying to find out what is possible in this and uh, when i get something new which can be done with it i certainly have to try to plug it with uh, you know some of the existing works i have or some form of innovation which i'm thinking of so um when i was experimenting i found i mean talking to conl and of course uh, we, we i found that there is this linkage that can be happening and suddenly uh, okay let me let me think of ideas around this and uh although it was an experiment it turned out to be uh, a really uh, i would say a really good one in that matter mm -hmm. especially regalia for that matter it uh, came out to be a really good experience where it's not just me talking to the collectors it's about me the audience and the collectors everybody coming together in one artwork and that was just amazing like everybody uh, the whole ecosystem comes together the audience viewing it tries to draw on it collectors can switch layers i am i as an artist creates this thing and that that was just amazing yeah i think you know you mentioned before that there was like a contest and you know everybody was participating like i was i was actually thinking about this um yesterday as well around like you know this really like interesting intersection with with crypto art and you know nfts where it's like part of it is you know art and creativity then there's like a financial part which obviously you know plays uh, an important role in in the creator and the collector and you know in anybody in the ecosystem and then there's like a community part and there's also a big gaming kind of um aspect yeah. to it especially you know for like a platform like async or you know art blocks which kind of like bring people to be more active kind of you know forms of collections rather than like passive um where you know you can play around like something like this something like regalia even you know your um the genesis piece like you know you're playing around you're asking collectors and users even if you're if they're not collecting to you know experiment with uh with what you've created so it's really kind of like an intersection of so many so many things which i don't know does that kind of like help with creativity or is it sometimes yeah yeah like too even too much maybe yeah so uh here's the thing at least when i created uh, chromology and i mean regalia and especially chromology my uh, idea of what it expresses was play Yeah. or uh, you know it it was the, the emotion which i tried to impart was play or fun not i wouldn't say fun but it's more like play and uh, so that that was what i intended and it it turned out to be that which was really great and uh, the feedback was also enormous and the story also evolved along the way the fact that these interactive nfts has more uh, to give or more uh, of a conversation uh maker uh, between the uh, artists and the audience is 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 something very interesting and as i see it going forward you can see wildly lot of experiences coming in right now it's just the beginning is what i would say because you can see uh, probably apps or even you know full time games and all those things coming in apart from which you will have uh, all kinds of experiences which uh, would be around ar vr ai and everything plugged in together which will be coming in so um yeah I, i think i think it's it's about that and uh, as a creator myself from that time i've uh, evolved in different ways so 
every time i create something i think of these emotions like you know just now i said play so at later on stage it might be something else you know it it, it really depends on what you feel at that time right so yeah yeah i'm talking about um you know emotions actually um i know that like a big part of your you know your like body of work and your creation process um is like poetry and you know you have like a, a series on on maker's place as well but also your recent um your recent piece on async maybe i'll go on to uh, maker's place first and then we can go into um into async uh which kind of combines like ai poetry and and music um so yeah like let's let's chat a little bit about this because i think it's it's super interesting yeah um so i uh, poetry is really uh, close to my heart uh, although i i don't say I'm, i'm good at it i try to be good at it uh, i uh, have seen i mean i i'm a big fan of many poets rumi especially uh, and i kind of write more on the lines of uh, a mixture of uh, philosophy and uh, you know transcending and uh, kind of going into the border of spirituality and all those things uh, uh, again uh, this 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 particular uh, series called ood was uh, at a moment when i was uh, you know uh, a lot into meditation and uh, kind of a more peaceful time of my life where i was focused on things which are a little more slower than the usual pace of life that is perhaps why the aesthetics are also a little more you know peaceful uh, in that manner and uh, i was also also delving into a lot more abstract imagery and uh, style gan was the thing at that time uh, uh, artificial intelligence based i mean style gan based so i i kind of curated a watercolor based data set myself and i created uh, these uh, imagery out of it but usually when we create style gan animation it's it's it, it has a it has a certain motion associated with it like it transcends from tra- transitions from one form to the other in a particular way but i wanted to change that a little bit and kind of use uh, some video editing tools like after effects for that uh, and the poetry came either after or before that so it could be after when i actually see the image and see the video and then you know talk of talk about it to bosses or else it's before that i wanted to show what i felt like when i was making it and uh, finally i'm i'm uh, music is something i'm really uh, delving into a lot more these days uh, try to generate these things so i i kind of generated a few soundtracks with the tool and i kind of plugged it in which matched with the aesthetics and uh, that's how the old series was born that's amazing i mean you have um so many different like creative forms of expression you know you, you like you span to no but it's it's a uh, like i say this in a very kind of um you know really interesting like to see how yeah, yeah. you um, like uh, kind of mix so many different areas of like creativity together whether it's you know poetry with music with ai with gan um generative art it's um yeah it's i'm i'm curious to to understand you know kind of like also where that comes from like is it something that you know you've always you know been very like experimental in your creative process or is it something that was also maybe even nurtured within the space within this time okay so uh, at least the first one of the first conversation i had when i entered crypto art was around style and perhaps where i came from was that i really can't stick to a style because i'm a firm believer that uh, creativity is the constant and the rest of the things are the variable so i could take any tool or any medium or any uh, form of expression and i could express it in my own way in my own form or uh, from my own heart but uh, if you if you tell me that i have to do only that for a while that is when i probably uh, it's that's kind of how i i've been building myself up i would say i just i just can't uh, i would need uh, the freedom of ex- freedom of moving around and seeing what is possible what is uh, what can be connected together and if if you see this a lot of my works have a lot of connections which different mediums go 
one is this is uh, physical paintings watercolor art because i uh, created from watercolor data sets and uh, watercolor art mixed with uh, you know artificial intelligence mixed with this but beyond the medium i it was a sense of each piece what what kind of emotion it evoked in me so you now that that is the uh, major part of it right that came out as a poetry and uh, yeah i think uh, again as i said i i really won't call i'm a person who can stick to stick to a style and whoever i'm talking to these days they are all uh, kind of agreeing so i'm I, i'm good i'm good that way <laughs> <laughs> at least not just for myself they also don't feel like they want to stick to a style you know that that's really great to hear yeah and also yeah. you know i i remember um one of the first interviews i ever had uh on vertical crypto was with Mario Klingerman who you know is also like a big like an artist and um works with AI a lot and uh, he said something which kind of stuck with me like ever since um and i i've told him like 100 times about this but it's like i like he, that his mind is processed to always do something new because as soon as he gets the repetition that's not interesting to him anymore and so he needs to you know like go beyond that um like as soon as that repetition happens it's you know that that interesting is, is not interesting anymore and so it gets boring and so it's not uh, there's no you know passion in it and you know i feel i feel like there's some similarities in, in what you're just suggesting now um and i am like that you know as well like to me uh repetition is is a bit of a a bit of a killer and i i and i i completely agree with you know the having like a genre right or a style like i actually think the one of the one of the biggest you know beauties of this space is how you can because you're seeing so much from so many different artists with from so many different places which you would not maybe necessarily see in like a you know a normal context of a gallery or you know a, a creative community of where you live etc like you can get so many different inputs yeah uh yeah i mean you talked about mario of course uh, he's a <laughs> person i uh, i really admire uh, and uh, what he said is it really resonates with me while he is always looking for the new i'm looking for the new connections probably that's what he is also doing but what i mean is that i i try to find out where i can uh, connect uh, different things and it's it's interesting how uh, you know at least i mean a lot of people i mean i am i'm happy that you also relate to it easily is uh, has to go have to go beyond the genre system and uh, i wouldn't say that it's just it's just that's the only way to go ahead i would say there are diverse folks out there and everybody has their own way to go uh perhaps we or maybe i myself is a person who would uh get bored with not just repetitions but uh, a pattern which happens uh but there are people who love and see the beauty in that pattern so uh i sh- i should really look at the other side also where folks who mm-hmm. love those repetitions and patterns they see new meaning in that they are making amazing creations and again there is great beauty in that also so it's 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 great to admire on both sides that way yeah yeah absolutely um i'd love to also um chat a little bit about your recent piece on async which is the augmented artist series because i think it has um you know i i kind of i you know i i know a lot about this story because we've chatted about it before but i would love for you to uh explain really the process behind this and your idea when you started creating this especially around you know the human augmenting ai and the ai augmenting the human which i think is very nuanced and unique okay uh, just before i start let me uh, probably ask the same thing to you what what did you i mean you you've read about it uh, we've talked yeah. about it what, what what did you think about the work probably then i can extend that conversation Yeah so something that i found super interesting um is exactly you know when when we were talking you mentioned uh this cycle right about you know human to ai 
and AI to human and human back to AI, you know? And it's something that I found that it was very um, unique. Like usually it's kind of, or at least, you know, some of the work that I've, that I've come across uh, is, you know, human to AI and then AI output, right? Um, and the, um, the fact that actually what the AI has generated is an input for your creativity and your creativity is then an, an input again for the AI and it kind of goes around in circle is something that to me was, um, was, was, yeah, was super cool to, to read through it. And also the process of, you know, the poetry connected to the painting to then be connected back to you. Like it was so, so much of a, <laughs> almost like a circular, you know, economy kind of, you know, like a circular <laughs> creative economy uh, that was evolving. So that I found uh, very unique yeah. And, and yeah, interesting to me. Okay, uh, that's really great to hear. Okay, starting <laughs> from there. So I, I, uh, I keep telling uh, this thing that uh, uh, in a debate, uh, one person or a few persons win and in a dialogue, uh, everybody wins. So, uh, so what happens when you start to have a dialogue with a machine is kind of what I'm exploring here. Nothing new or anything, but it's it's my own take at it. So, um, the idea was that at least in the uh, when I uh, this this was early uh, late 2018 when I discussed with my friend on you know there's this idea I have uh, how about we create something where uh, a social media bot which hosts uh, artificial intelligence based painting and uh, poetry associated with it and you know it does a style transfer and colors it based on a particular mood and everything and it posts for one year the idea was uh, i mean we we suddenly clicked on the idea we went on we created the board it ran for uh, one year and uh, we got exhibitions in multiple different places one being uh, i'm happy to say it's in italy uh, your place yeah. uh, so florence uh, we talked about it yeah so um, yeah and uh, after that, what my, uh, so again, this comes a lot, largely from meditation and, uh, you know, going a little deeper into, uh, you know, silence. I, I think of this thought exercise at times. Can you read a painting without words? I mean, you don't have to read it out loud, but to yourself, how do you read it without words? Now, language is the means of, you know, expressing your uh, thoughts and uh, emotions and feelings or whatever. But how do you read it without words? Now, what what is the kind of feelings? What are the kind of, uh, you know, that uh, that bumps or lows that is coming in your mind when you go through each of these things? Now, each of these part of an image produces that certain feeling associated with it. I'm not putting words to it, but let's call it a feeling. Now, this feeling is what I would say, uh, if you go a little more deeper into silence and everything, you see these things are the thought predecessors. And even in a more finer and subtler form, you will see these thought predecessors uh, come from a very root uh, area. Now, I was thinking if I can get inspired from some of the images created by Aurea, the bot which we created, and you know, translate that into a painted version. So uh, each of this required uh, looking at the painting for some time and you know absorbing these things, again, not defining any words to it, but associating the feelings with it into the canvas and, you know, uh, sorry, translating it into the canvas. And that was when, uh, and also to take part in the poetry, which Aurea created. And this is way before the GPT-2s and the GPT-3s. And this is very, very basic stuff. Uh, so um, yeah. this 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 poem was again translated and uh, into my own version of it, and somehow I tried to me make a cohesive, harmonious work with those two pieces together, and that is that is largely how it began. And uh, I started to make a cycle out of it, just like you said, where I take, took this painting and I I was trying to see what uh, again uh, machine learning would create out of it using clip and other algorithms. And uh, that was also interesting because it created a more abstract imagery. And again, I could read it. Uh, so when will the cycle end? Uh, probably it's like a dialogue between the machine and the human. It, it keeps on going. And ever since, ever, again, the machine is evolving. 
over the course of years, new machine learning algorithms coming and everything. And the human, of course, is evolving through his or her own learning. So this dialogue is also progressing. So uh, the aim of a dialogue is progress. So let's let's probably I mean that that's something which I'm exploring. I mean uh, let's let's see where it goes uh, along the way. And uh, this particular series was hand painted six of them, and I uh, I thought it was the right time to put it up in async. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's how it reached there. And do you want to talk about the six uh, different states? So yeah. Yeah, so uh, the, the first state uh, probably is differential. Uh, yeah, this is uh, this essentially was a little more on the, uh, I would say, I mean, uh, and sudden imagery that comes to you is the scarier side of things where, you know, you can say go or so whatever. But what it involved in me uh, largely was around how there are uh, two th sides to things where you see a image which is a darker or scarier, but it is meant to do it is meant to help us in some way. So I'm a firm believer uh, in the fact that uh, everything is right, which would be such a, a stupid statement to hear, but uh, I don't say everything is right in the sense that you can do anything you want. I say that human beings are evolving and it's not like, you know, uh, a right thing happens and wrong thing happens and death happens, uh, but we are all in the process of evolving to the, to a, to a certain goal. I'm not defining what it is right now, but to a certain goal. And everybody is in that path and everybody goes through the ups and downs in life through that. So uh, there are uh, perhaps at times events which happen to you, which would be in perspective, or sorry, would be in uh, first place is a negative thing for you, but in perspective, it turns out to be the better. So when you see this image, perhaps you will feel immediately like, okay, this is scary. There is something, some beings out there, uh, you know, there, there are shape shifting or whatever, whatever, but it, it, it gives a more uh, innate feeling of uh, how, at least in the bigger picture, things would turn out to be different. Yeah, that's uh, largely it. But I, I mean, I could go on about this. Uh, there are different meanings I had interpreted from it when I created it. I can go on uh, every, any day. For this. Let, yeah. Let's go into the, so the, all of the different states, because it's interesting that they're all referring to a certain uh, emotion or feeling that you might, um, you might have. Yeah. So I think, I think the second one uh, is empathy. Uh, empathy was uh, uh, largely, uh, I think it's, it's the base emotion that uh, probably anyone would aspire to have if they are, uh, they know about a lot more. Uh, I mean, they they know about a lot more about themselves because largely this whole world is connected, and we are not, uh, you know, individual pieces trying to reach a point. We are uh, connected pieces trying to reach a point. Now, how do you make that connection? It's it's really simple. You know, you empathize with them. You really put yourself in the shoes of the other person and find out what they want, what they what they feel like. Now, uh, the, largely it was the color that came out uh, to me, at least in this picture where uh, I sounded with it. And I've talked about how this color resonates with me. Uh, and uh, it's delving into the shapes and forms, my intention was to empathize with the picture. And that went into, again, um, perhaps I don't want to put it into words like, you know, this happened or that happened, but there were these feelings associated with it of nostalgia and of uh, how someone has helped me and how I felt about it and how I could return it back. So that came down to be what is empathy. Okay, and the next one is peril. This is my favorite actually. Yeah, this, uh, I just went a little wild with this got saturated colors and you know uh, get caught into the zone and this this is more active this is more uh, on uh, on the uh, you know on the more uh, reaching out uh, type of things and pearl was essentially because i used a particular pigment particular uh, color in this which was pearlescent and that was uh, it kind of gave me the meaning at that time again uh, this is more abstract i I mean, I, I can go into uh, talking about it. This is uh, these are these are uh, something I I really don't have words to express by. Yeah. I love this because I think it's like it's very much up to 
like individual interpretation um and it has you know so many like different kind of you know color what's like empathy is like warm like you can you know there's like almost like a face that you can see like a smiley face i don't know at least like this that's how i see it um but this is kind of like um a bit all over the place so you can you can really just kind of interpret it as you as you want um which which i like and yeah Okay, let's let's go into holy shit. <laughs> oh yeah, this this is this was the very first one, if I'm right, uh, and this was this was uh, more on the lines of a utopian future. Uh, I had marked out sections of it. I mean, this was very logical. I mean, I didn't use my right side of the brain at all for this. This was a very logical piece, uh, a bit maybe uh, on the right side, but this was you know there is this utopian architecture. You have greenery growing, but it's all black in color. Now, what happens when, you know, nature is growing uh, in a darker version of it? What happens when nature expresses a darker side? And you have this uh, water coming in, which looks calm, which looks in a calmer shade of color, but it has this uh, certain sense of you know, moving towards the architecture in a very fierce fashion. So the, all all these things came into a play and. Uh, yeah, this was, I would say, one of those logical pieces, you know, I would, okay, I'll assemble these together and, you know, fit these things together and make it. Uh, and then the poetry, again, re resonated with what I had in mind and uh, I reinterpreted it in my version. And then we have Punch. <laughs> uh, yeah, this this was uh, this was a very, very straightforward, very simple interpretation. It, it was, it was just, just, I mean, there's no nothing added to it, you know. There was this image which looked like uh, a glass with a uh, uh, with a beverage in it, and I I just wanted to interpret it in my fashion. But uh, when it came out, I added this small uh, feather on the hat kind of a thing, which I found out with that, and it somehow went with it. Again, there is no uh, I I I I probably don't want to add anything to it, saying that that's what I thought, but. This is this is it. This is this was a really really dark interpretation, fully uh, visual uh, and fully you know right side of the brain kind of thing. Yeah. And then there's this one which is ugly. Yeah, this this uh, the term ugly came out only after I painted it. It's not because I found it ugly, <laughs> uh, because uh, it was largely because the feeling I had at that time was ugly. So this this was created at uh, perhaps at a moment of my life which uh, was, for the lack of a better word, I would say ugly itself. Uh, but uh, it involved a lot of blue and uh, dark uh, colors at that time, and uh, it involved strong relationships and uh, you know problems that faced uh, uh, around that. And uh, you can see how the light blue is being replaced by the dark blue. And uh, the place you are in, which is the black area is, I mean, which is the area at the center is getting darker. So uh, again, the situation, at least the mindset which I created in it was pretty ugly. I, yeah, that's, that's how the name came out. Is there a reason why, um, or maybe not, uh, but, just wondering if there's a reason why the b color blue kind of came up with the word um, ugly, or was it just, you know, how you felt at the time that you wanted to paint yeah. with like variations of blue? Uh, again, um, so again, the term ugly came after the painting and uh, it was largely based on the situation. Uh, but the blue was largely because it, it made sense with the situation I had. Uh, because um, well, uh, blue is uh, something I associate associate with uh, you know uh, not disturbance. I would say, um, for the lack of a better word, I would say um, you know movement in the movement in the depths, like you know mm -hmm. yeah. a darker uh, moment. Uh, and it, it's it's easy when you, you when you add a blue pigment, it can get darker very easily when you paint. Uh, you'll have the feeling like that. Uh, and uh, perhaps it's my own subjective interpretation of it that I brought this color up uh, and yeah, that's how it came out. That's interesting. Um, well, I mean, it's super, so interesting to hear all of your, um, all of your like stories and going back to, 
you know, the very early kind of like from the very early uh, days of the first, you know, NFT, like up until like, you know, recent times, which is basically um, this piece. I think something that I'd like to maybe like close on as well is, um, you know, the, the role of the Museum of Crypto Art, but also of your role specifically as well uh, as like artist council and in general, you know, how you feel and think about what um, the team behind like Museum of Crypto Art is, is building for the space. Yeah, um, so I, I've been, I've been, uh, so I think we've had this conversation already. I've been uh, looking at uh, critiques in this space. I mean, I've, I've been uh, looking for people who uh, have conversations around an artwork and expresses their, uh, you know, take in it and uh, probably share their version of it and have thought uh, built up on it. And um, I, I mean, I've been supporting folks uh, regarding that. If we can bring those kind of, you know, uh, thought leadership into the space uh, that will be really amazing and one of the places which i knew uh, at least for a longer time uh, because of their collection and the conversation i've had with them especially call one is that uh, museum of crypto art is a place uh, where it is uh, not just about uh, you know the creation and the uh, you know collection but there is this uh, more uh, in a process about how we grow, uh, at least inwardly as uh, as folks, uh, when we when it comes to the thoughts around a piece or the meaning that the piece expresses, and that is where I I, I feel Museum of Crypto Art has a very large role to play, at least in the future. And again, um, it 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 has already started. If I'm right, uh, we will be having uh, having some conversations with some folks there. And uh, I, I mean, uh, it, it is amazing to see uh, great artists coming together uh, at one place and talking about, uh, you know, uh, these kind of things. Uh, and it would be really amazing to see how they would interpret, say, we'll take one artwork or we'll see uh, how uh, this whole area would, you know, thoughtfully progress and we talk about that. These conversations is what would progress the culture of NFT space. And uh, having said that, uh, I was uh, invited by Colborn, luckily, uh, to be one of the um, artist council members uh, with some really amazing folks. And I think um, some of the larger agenda is to, you know, record uh, events historically and, uh, you know, curation process. I'm more excited towards the curation process because uh, I, I I had this. Uh, I mean, uh, I, I'm I'm I like to enjoy art uh, by, you know, sitting and looking at it for some time, uh, mostly. Uh, so Twitter is not perhaps the right place because <laughs> it 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 just pushes a lot. Of, so I I uh, at least uh, during my early days in the crypto art space, me and uh, one of my friends in the space, Indrani, had started this blog uh, post uh, reviewing rare hidden gems in the nft space and uh, writing about them you know just just what we feel about them and uh, and I, it, it really uh, went well and really had good responses and more importantly it uh, brought uh, more conversation around each of these pieces that was really amazing so uh, when it comes to uh, collecting a work i myself besides just relating to it i really delve a little more into the meaning of it so uh, that's how I'm uh, more excited towards the curation process, uh, curation, uh, yeah, group. And yeah, I, I'm really happy to be part of it. Uh, I know this is this is going to be an amazing, amazing venture, and we have some of the best folks uh, heading it. And um, yeah, let's let's. I'm, I'm glad to be glad to be part of it. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, I think, you know, all of what you said is is uh, absolutely fundamental. Like, you know, the um, the part of like curation is something that I as well, obviously, like I'm really, you know, excited and interested in and um, to have, you know, so many like brilliant kind of artists that have been so fundamental to the growth of the space, like joined together to talk about um, art, to make, you know, informed kind of decisions of also, you know, what happens within the museum is 
yeah, it's, it's, it's beautiful to see. So it's really exciting times. Yeah, I'm sure we'll have a lot more conversations on this. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I'm looking forward to those. Well, looking thank you so it. much for being. It was great to have you and to speak to you. Uh, and thanks for your time. Thank you so much, Mikal. It was great mm -hmm. to talk to you as well. Speak soon. Ciao. Speak soon. Bye.